Hello everybody and welcome back to the JavaScript tutorial. So in this video we're going to be talking about operators. Now we're mostly going to be focusing on logical and assignment operators, but there is another kind of operator called a compared, uh, comparison operator and bitwise operator, which we may touch on in later videos. Now, what is an operator? Well, essentially an operator is something that allows us to perform um, some operation on data or on operands. Now to demonstrate this to you, I'm just going to start by declaring two variables. I'm going to set x equal to 10. And I'm going to set var uh, y equal to 5. Now someone was mentioning to me in previous tutorials that I do not need these semicolons. So apparently you don't need those while you're actually writing your JavaScript code. I'm just so used to the other languages I write in that need the semicolon. So anyways, that's something to note, you don't need to add those. But by habit, I probably will. The benefit of adding these though is that if you do that you can actually assign or do more than one thing in the same line so for example if i wanted to define another variable z and i didn't want to do it on a new line as long as i'm uh, separating these statements by semicolons i'm actually able to do that okay so anyways let's continue now all right so let's just get in and talk about what the operators are and what they do they're pretty straightforward i'm certain most of you will understand them so what i'm going to do is create a variable called Z. And what I want to do is I want to store the result of the addition between X and Y. Now I'm sure you guys can guess how you do this X plus Y. In this instance, our operator is called plus or the addition operator, which is right here. And our operands are X and Y. And that is, you know, the basics of doing this of what operators are. Anyways, what I'm going to do is just log my results to the console here. So you guys can see it. So let's refresh that we get the value 15. And you know, we're certain now that this addition operator is working. Now I'll go through a few other operators pretty quickly, just because this is fairly straightforward. So we obviously have our subtraction operator, which is going to do a subtraction between x and y. So our value is five here. We also have our multiplication operator, which is an asterisk. So that's above the eight on your keyboard. That's obviously going to do multiplication. So 50 is our answer there. We have our division operator, which is simply one slash. This will do our division, give us a value of two. And we have one more operator that I'm sure a lot of you may have seen before, which is called modulus. Now I'm going to stick on this one for a second, just because a lot of people get confused with this operator. What this operator does is give you the remainder of a division. So if you remember back to kind of to elementary school, when you didn't really deal with decimal numbers, when you used to divide two numbers, what you would do is figure out how many times the um, divisor or whatever, I guess the thing is that's going into the number can go into it. And then you would calculate a remainder. So to give you an example, let me just change our values here. So we do something like 10 divided by four and we say we're not allowed to use decimals. We're only allowed to use whole numbers for finding the answer to this. Well, what our answer is going to be is, okay, how many times can four go into 10? Well, four can go in twice. So that means we're going to have automatically, we know we're going to have two as our starting number. And now we know it's going to be like 2.42 or something like that. But the thing is we can't use decimal numbers. So we say, well, we can divide it by two and we have a remainder of two. And that is our answer to this question. So what this modulus operator does is give you the remainder aspect of any division. So in this case, we know the remainder is going to be two. So let's actually run this and see our remainder is two. I'm, I know it didn't change, but anyways, let's change this to three now and I'll show you. So if I do 10 divided by three, what's my answer going to be? Well, how many times can three go into 10? It can go in three times. That's a value of nine. 10 minus nine is one. Remainder is one. And there we go. Our remainder is one. So that's what this operator does. If you're confused by it, literally just think, okay, um, let's, you know, figure out how many times this number can go into it and then what's left over after that. And it's actually very useful. And there's a lot of instances where you may want to use it. Okay. So that is um, sweet. So now let me just show you though. And I'm actually going to ask the question here, since I've done, you know, X modulus Y, or I've done X plus Y or whatever like this and stored it in the value Z, do the values of X and Y change here? Are they changing as we do this? Now think about your answer. I'm going to print them out and I will show you guys and explain why they don't change. Okay. So let's run this. There we go. So we have 13, 10, and three. I'll zoom out a little bit. And obviously we can see that the value of X and the value of Y did not change after we performed this operation. And the reason they did not change is because I am actually not changing the values of X and Y here. I'm simply getting them by writing them and storing the results of their addition in the variable Z. So the only variable that's going to be changed or declared is going to be the variable Z. Even if I decide to do something like X plus Y here, you know, we'll add our semicolon and we run this again, we can see that those values still aren't changing because we haven't told X and Y to change. We've simply got the result of their addition. So what if we want to change X and Y and perform some kind of operation on them? So let's get rid of all this. 
and let's talk about how we can do this now. So actually, there's another kind of uh, kind of assignment operator that we have that has to deal with these logical operators too, which is something called plus equals. Now what x plus equals is going to do is say x is going to be equal to x plus whatever value I put on this right side here. So in this case, if I put five and I go console.log and we put x, now x is going to be changed to be 15. The reason again is because what this is doing is when I say plus equals rather than just plus, it's going to say, all right, x is going to be equal to whatever it was before plus five. Let's run this. There we go. We can see now we are printing out 15. Now this works the same for all our other logical operators. So minus equals obviously works as well. We get our value of five. We can do times equals. That's going to give us 50. We can do divided equals. That is going to give us two. And we can do modulus equals, which is actually just going to give us zero. And the reason it's giving us zero is again, because five can evenly divide 10. So there is no remainder to that division. Awesome. So that is how those work. Now I'll do the next example with Y just because why not? And essentially what we can do here is increment or decrement Y. So there's another operator called increment and another one called decrement. Increment is plus plus and decrement is minus minus. Now increment simply means add one. Very easy, really straightforward. And if I run this now, we can see that Y gives us a value of four rather than three because this plus plus simply adds one and stores that in the value Y. Rather than if I were to do Y plus one like this, you can see that the value of y actually doesn't change. All right, so y plus plus, we know that works. What about y minus minus? Well, this is a decrementing, so simply subtracting one. That gives us the value of two, and those are our logical operators. Now, these operators only work um, on numbers, or at least most of them only work on numbers, and I'm going to talk about the specifics now. All right, so let's define a variable, which is a string. Let's just call it str, because why not? And let's call this string hello. Now, what do you think I'm going to get if I try to do str plus x? Well, actually, in this instance, that'll work. But let's do something like this uh, var z equals and str plus x. Let's see what happens when I print z. What do you guys think we're going to get here? All right, so let's run this. And you can see we get hello 10. Now, whenever we have a string and a number and we're adding them together, what ends up happening is we simply convert the number to a string and just mush it together with whatever that string is. So what we've done here is we said, OK, we're going to have hello. We're going to add that to 10. Well, obviously, these are not both numbers, so we can't get some logical answer that makes sense. So what we'll do is we'll convert 10 to a string and we'll just kind of append it and put it on the end of hello. And that's exactly how that works. And this is another thing that we call string concat concatenation. Now concatenation is typically done between two strings, but I guess it works here with a number because we just convert them into numbers. But let me show you what happens if I do something like str2 equals hello world. And let's now actually get rid of this value z. And let's simply do str plus str2. Well, you can guess based on what happened when we added 10 to this string, what our result is going to be. Well, in this case, what we're going to do is simply have hello, and then we're just going to mush world right beside it. We're going to concatenate them, join them together. And that's going to be a result, which is going to be hello world. And this obviously is going to be on one line. Let me zoom out um, and with no spaces. Now, if we want a space, all we'd have to do is add a space there or add a space there. So if I run this, we can see we get hello world. So that's useful to know, especially when you're printing different things out. But it also means, you know, you can mush two strings together. And all that's going to happen is you're going to take the one string that your base string and you're just going to add the other string directly to the end of it. Again, spaces, you have to add them yourself if you'd like them to exist. And that is called string concatenation. OK, so that is cool. It's not exactly what I wanted to show, uh, but I also want to talk about, you know, what happens if I try to do something like hello minus three. Well, what is this going to give us? So this is not a concatenation because we're not joining two strings. We're not combining them together with that plus sign. So what is this going to give us? Well, let's refresh this and we get an error. STR2 is not. Def oh, OK, well, let's just get rid of STR2 for a second and let's run this. Uh, OK, run. Nan, what is that? 
Well, this essentially means that we cannot do this operation. Whenever we try to do an operation like this in JavaScript, rather than actually just crashing, which is nice, we're just going to get this NAN, which simply stands for, you know, this, we don't have, there's no answer to this. We don't know what the answer to this is. You can't do that. Same thing. If I try actually multiplication might work. Let's see. I uh, know multiplication doesn't work in this. So when we do the multiplication, we get NAN as well, which is saying, you know, I don't know how to multiply a string by three. So I can't give you an answer to that state. Same thing. Obviously, if we try to do something like dividing a string, we can't do that. This division operator only works between numbers. So we're getting that NAND value. All right. So that is kind of how that works. I wanted to show that obviously, you know, if you try to use an operator that can't be used on a string, you're going to get an issue. In this case, you're not getting an error. We're not crashing the program, but it's simply saying that we can't evaluate this statement. We don't know the answer to it. So we get that NAND value. Awesome. Now let's just show a few other examples here and how we can kind of add multiple things together. All right. So when using operations, uh, the order of operations is important. And that's something I want to talk about. So what I'm going to do is actually we'll clear these out and we'll just say var um, result equals. And now we're just going to start typing actually an expression that we can evaluate. So what I'm going to do is simply do something like four times five over three plus nine minus two. Now, obviously, you know, this isn't the easiest thing to compute in your head. So we'll log the result. But what I want to demonstrate is the fact that order of operations apply in computers, just like they apply when you're doing regular mathematics. So essentially, we start reading from left to right and we apply bed mass, which is the rule that I kind of learned the acronym for this. So we have B and I hope this doesn't keep auto completing D M A S. Now what this stands for is brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. I won't actually, eh, why not? Multiplication, addition, and subtraction, and we'll just add the M there. Okay, so this is the order of operations that we need to follow. Not sure if I spelled all these right, but regardless, and let's actually put these in a multi-line comment to make sure that we can leave those here. This essentially means we're going to follow this order of operation. We're going to look if there's any brackets. If there is, we're going to evaluate what's in the brackets. Then we're going to do any exponents that we have, then any division, then any multiplication, then any addition, then subtraction, which means that this part of our statement is going to happen first. So, I mean, we can look at this and see what we get as our answer. We're getting 13. Wow. Okay. Some crazy number like that. But what if I want to change the result of this? What if I want to, you know, do all of this? addition and subtraction before I decide to divide, you know, 20 by whatever this result is. Well, if I want to do that, I can just add some brackets around this. And now since these are in brackets, we're going to follow our order of operations and do that first and notice that our answer should change. And it does, it changes to two. So that is, you know, exactly how this works. We can put things in brackets if we want to define when they're going to be operated on. So this needs to happen before this is divided by that. And we could do the same thing here where if we wanted to do, you know, five divided by all of this and then multiplied by four, let's have a look at what that answer is going to be. And that answer is still going to be two because obviously that's not going to change whether what order we put that in. So yeah, that is kind of how this works. That is how operations work. That's how operators work. Obviously you can do string operators. And I guess the last thing to show is just like, let's say hi like this. I did something, you know, like X plus plus or X plus equals. Sorry, I can do string plus equals. In this case, let's just go high again. Let's go console dot log str. We'll add my semicolon there to be consistent and let's run this and you can see we get high hot. So strings, you can use the plus operator on, you can use plus equals, you can concatenate and join those strings together. And then numbers, you have a series of operations like subtraction, division, multiplication, addition, modulus, all of those. Anyways, that has been it for logical operators in the next video. We'll get into comparison operators and I will see you guys there.